Hello, it is Jamila McMallow, Life and Relationship Strategist for Powerful Driven Women Coaches and Business Owners. And today we are talking about limiting beliefs and weight loss, why you can't keep the weight off. I'm actually going to be inviting in a collaborator, my friend. Uh, okay, went on ahead and invited her in. Hey. Hey, Jamila. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So I've already kind of done the introduction on what we're going to be talking about, um, you know, limiting beliefs and weight loss and what that has to do with keeping the weight off. I also just want to indicate that um, I have two toddlers. I have a four-year-old and an almost two-year-old. So any background noise, dad's in charge. <laughs> so you know how that goes. Aww. So yeah, so just ignore it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's lovely. That's lovely. <laughs> I like hearing kids in the background. <laughs> oh, thank you. So why don't you um, just introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Teresa Maloney, and I am founder of the program that's called Flow Fit Coaching Ultimate Reset. So it's a 12-week weight loss program for women that are struggling uh, with losing weight due to changing hormones and stress levels as well. And uh, so I'm happy to talk to you about this topic today, um, about what's behind, like what is, what are the deeper issues really? Is it really about the food or is there more? Is there more to it than that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what have you seen like with your clients? What are some of the stories um, that you find that they're telling themselves about their um, relationship with food and weight loss? I would say the, the biggest thing is there's that the belief that it's an all or nothing approach hmm. that, you know, you have to be super restrictive and be a hundred percent and, you know, not allow yourself a lot of the pleasures of life. So it becomes very difficult emotionally because who's perfect at anything? Really? Right. Yeah. And and so we can really, as women, um, really beat ourselves up when we take a weekend off or we enjoy a family dinner. Um, and, and it can really create a lot of limiting beliefs because you can't stick to it 100%. You feel, well, you know, I don't think I can do this. And so there's a lot of these, this self-talk that goes on when really so much success can happen when we're 60%. Or 70%, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and just realizing that, um, you know, we can still enjoy life and uh, enjoy sugar and wine and chocolate and all the pleasures of life, <laughs> you yes. know, being that that way. So, yeah. Um, what, do you find that there's a lot, a lot of women that you, your clients that have limiting beliefs? Oh, all of them. Every single one of them. As you know, we all have them, right? Um, and we serve uh, the same type of woman in, in different capacities, but that driven, high achieving, go getter, you know, unstoppable attitude, you know, type of a, a woman. And so when you said that she approaches weight loss um, as an all or nothing thing, that makes so much sense. Because when you're a, a high achiever or a high performer, there's only one outcome that's acceptable that's winning. And so there is no halfway. There is no half stepping. There are no baby steps. It's kind of like, what are you talking about? It's this harsh way of dealing with ourselves, of browbeating ourselves. And if we are really honest and do the work and dig deep, we'll find out that sometimes that voice that we're hearing, it's not our own. It maybe is our mother. You know, it could have been our father or some other caregiver um, who was maybe, I mean, let's face it. If you're over 40, you were raised in a time where parenting was not all soft and fluffy all the time. Our parents tended to be a little more harsh, a little more restrictive. It was just, you know, not like it is now where everybody cares about your feelings and emotions. It was, it was like, do as you're told or you're going to get consequences. And so it was a lot of more um, rigidity to it. And so a lot of us came out of that with a sense of rigidity about how we deal with ourselves because our parents how they treat us is usually how we end up treating ourselves what was the conditioning what were the takeaways that or, or conclusions that i formed as a three or four year old about myself about life about what it means to be a woman 
And then how is that affecting me today? Because those things that are driving, you know, your clients, you say, are typically women like in their 50s or 40s. Um, that's still the four or five-year-old version of them that's driving them, that's driving the bus on yes. their weight loss. And so that's who you're really dealing with. So she's the one that's got to give herself a break and understand that it's okay to take a breath, like you say, to do 60%. And that's basically that your best is good enough. If that makes yes. sense. Yes. Yep. Yes, absolutely. And um, it's a little bit of a double-edged sword because when we put these unrealistic expectations on ourselves, I mean, obviously we might lose some weight short term, but it's just not sustainable. Mm -hmm. And it can just put us on this emotional and confidence roller coaster because we haven't been able to um, uh, to maintain this kind of perfectionistic type of a, a nutrition program, you know, and, um, you know, enjoy those foods without guilt. And ultimately, it affects us physiologically in that when we are too restrictive, it really does a lot to our stress hormones. And what does mm. that do when we're stressed? Well, our metabolism slows down. And we actually, you know, we hold on to weight. So 100% thinking and that perfectionist thinking, um, our bodies, our, our, our natural biological makeup is, it, it just doesn't work. We can't function. We need to, we need to enjoy life. We need yes. to have fun. And, and fun is, is really when you're enjoying the walks outside and you're enjoying what you're eating. Mm -hmm. um, you almost will lose weight in a very sneaky way because you're enjoying it so much. Wow, it doesn't even really feel like you're on a plan because you love it. Right. And, but it's because your body isn't stressed and you aren't feeling that you have to meet this expectation um, that was once set out in the dieting world, which is, is extremely old school. And, and like you said, you're so right. These types of expectations uh, we grew up with. And they stay with us. For yeah, sure. And yeah. I was thinking too, because um, I've worked with clients who actually grew up with mothers who were very strict about their food. Like their mothers didn't want them to be fat. And so their mothers kind of by their, their intentions were good. Like they wanted their daughter to be healthy and, 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 and thin as it were. Um, but what she actually ended up creating within her daughter was a negative relationship with food to where she could never enjoy it. She always felt guilty, you know, all the way into her forties, you know, when we were working together and this, is, this is what's coming up, right. Um, that she yes. can't enjoy food because it's this bad thing that, Oh my gosh, what if I gain weight? Like gaining weight was like, Oh my goodness. You know, it, it was the end of the world. And mind you, she was not, she wasn't overweight at all. She was, looked really good, but it was like she had to be thin in order to feel like, she, or, or just be, she just had to be restrictive with herself. Like, there was no enjoyment. Like, if she enjoyed it, she felt guilty. So yes. Like, yes. And so what you're saying is so spot on, but you see how the root of it, it really had nothing to do with, with who she is today. It really had to do with what happened, what, those beliefs that were formed as a little girl that gaining weight is bad, you know, makes you a bad person. Or if you enjoy your food too much, you're greedy or you don't want to be big because if you're big, that's bad. You know, being big is bad, you know, and that kind of messaging. And here you are an adult and you're just trying to eat a meal <laughs> and you can't yeah. enjoy it. You don't know what to pick. And you're like, well, I'll indulge here and then I'll restrict there and I'll starve. It's like, you're, then she punish herself because she feel like she's just doing something wrong. And so it's just like, you know, um, it's just like this roller coaster cycle, which I know that you've seen, you know, in your industry with women going up and down. And it's this, and it's the underneath, it's those limiting beliefs, you know, that are yeah. really driving the bus. So um, what have you found to be effective in helping your clients to um, enjoy, you know, the process more? Because when people think weight loss, they're like, oh, I'm good. I'm you know, <laughs> they just think it's automatically going to be something unpleasant. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing is, well, 
you have to love your day to day. So regardless if your goal is just to stay fit or maintain your weight or lose weight or put on strength or get rid of cellulite or get toned here, get toned there, it doesn't really matter what the goal is. The only way it works is if you love it. I know that sounds just kind of cliche, but food is, you're breaking your day. Food is actually celebration. I mean, you think mm -hmm. traditionally it's fun. So regardless of what it is you're eating or what your goal is, loving your breakfast, loving your lunch, and looking at food and going out for a walk outside, not as a drudgery to get to your goal, but as a gift and like a celebration. And when you, because really, once you accomplish whatever that said goal is, there's actually not a lot that changes because mm -hmm. you don't want to go back to those old habits, right? Those, right. those things, those limiting beliefs and, and all of that. So really um, what you're doing is developing a lifestyle that you love. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing is, um, and I kind of call it, I like calling it the Cinderella, um, the Cinderella plan. And what I call the Cinderella <laughs> plan is really, um, of course, if you're trying to get to a goal, we have to really watch sugar. I mean, that's a given. Right. So, I mean, everybody knows that for sure. Um, eating too much sugar doesn't make us feel well. But I think there's something to be said when I talk about Cinderella. I, I talk about taking a night off or a day off or a weekend off and giving yourself permission to eat absolutely whatever you want with zero guilt. Like, yeah, I love that. And that's what makes a plan long term and sustainable to actually say, I'm going to enjoy whatever I want. I am really, it, it doesn't matter. And when you give yourself permission, it's so freeing um, because you can mm -hmm. really be in the moment and celebrate with people because there's nothing worse than, oh my gosh, you're out with friends and you haven't seen them for a while and you're thinking about eating something low calorie, like, you know, <laughs> you can't be in the present moment. So I right. find what really works is saying, you know what, I'm, I'm having whatever I want tonight. And tomorrow I'll have, you know, I'll, I'll get right back on what works for me. So mm -hmm. um, it really is about eating without guilt, having awareness, yes, and making nourishing food choices that you know are going to work but also um, giving yourself that permission um, because it's good for your body. It's good for your mind. And it right. really does help to take that, that guilt away. And you know what? It works. Yeah. It works. Right. When you do that. Yes. And so my, I guess my next question for you is, so what about the exercise piece? Right. Cause a lot of times we know food is a, is a big part of it, but movement, especially as we get older, is critical because yes. you're going to get stiff, you're going to get atrophied, you're going to lose your muscle tone, which slows down your metabolism, all those things. So how can a woman look at fitness in a way that, again, doesn't involve that harsh rigidity, browbeat, you got to go, go, go. And I mean, to some extent, I'll say this. So that way of being, right, that driven personality that we have, it absolutely has worked for us in a large way. Yeah. Many of us are very successful. It helps us to do certain things. It helps us to overcome challenges. It helps us to not stop at the first sign of obstacles, whatever. So there's a good side to it, right? But the, the, the bad side is that sometimes when it comes to us really doing things for ourselves, the way we go about it lacks the love, lacks the compassion, yes. lacks the, the understanding that we need to actually enjoy it. Because, like, who needs enjoyment? You know, it's like we're dealing with ourselves like we're a drill sergeant or something. And that's not necessary. And sometimes we don't even, we think, oh, well, then if, if we're too lax, we're going to end up being lazy. Or we're going to end up, you know, not doing it. And, and it's actually the opposite that ends up being true. Because we are who we are, right? And we're not quitters. We're not lazy. We're not unfocused. And when we really trust ourselves to be who we are, then we understand we don't have to do any of that. In fact, Positive reinforcement, positive rewards are what will get you more of what you want, right? So maybe you can speak in, to a little bit of like the, like I said, the exercise portion of how to make that fun and enjoyable. Yeah, absolutely. And this is where women need you. 
and we can <laughs> need a coach because there's an element when I think sometimes when you want to up level yourself, whether it's in relationships, whether it's physically or emotionally, um, there's just, it's sometimes it's hard to see ourselves as objectively. And we need that support for someone to say to us, no, you're not getting up at six o'clock in the morning. You need to sleep, but you need more sleep right now. <laughs> right. And I just want to know, because again, sometimes it's really hard because we have that feeling, well, I don't want to be feeling like I'm slacking off, but I also know that working out is good for me. So how do I know what the right balance is, mm -hmm. you know, to give myself permission to take a day off or when do I need to dig in and do it anyway? And that's really hard to see in ourselves. And sometimes we just need that person while we're starting our journey and we're just learning to give us that support of saying, no, you know, you're doing it right. Don't, don't be too hard on yourself. Um, just stay the course. And that kind of reassurance and reinforcement is really what a coach is all about because it is really hard to see, you know. Um, I can say this, you know, in, in terms of, I guess, um, if you're trying to figure this out on your own. Mm -hmm. um, here's the thing. We are sedentary right? We are naturally sedentary. Most of us are working, <laughs> sitting in front of a computer all day. And if you think back to, I always compare ourselves. I, I, um, when I think about my grandparents and my ancestors, we were meant to go to sleep physically tired mm -hmm. and we sit all day. So what does exercise do? It makes up for that, right? So going out, you know, even though you've got a lot of work to do, saying, no, my body needs to go outside, get some fresh air and go for a 30 minute walk. That's what I need. That is hard to do when you've got other obligations, right? Um, so consistency is really important. But I think the biggest thing is, um, is you don't need to go to a gym for two hours. Mm -hmm. I mean, having a short 20 minute strength routine that you can sneak in while dinner's um, in the oven, right? Just right. Get something and try and be consistent, but you don't have to spend a lot of time doing it. Um, and so that's the biggest thing is make your fitness routine consistent. But the only way we can do something consistently is if it's reasonable and it yes. fits in with who we are and our schedule and it uplifts us. It's not a drudgery and you know, and pick something, an activity that you really enjoy doing because it's that fun aspect as well. Um, and that enjoyment that you want to get out of physical fitness too. So that's, that's what I would say about that. But you, you're right. Consistency. I mean, it's like brushing your teeth and flossing as we get older. If we don't do it, you know, our body definitely does pay, but we don't have to make it so hard mm -hmm. and advance that it's like, this is not sustainable for me. I, you know, right. two weeks and I'm going to be exhausted and I just won't do it. So that's the key to, and that's where working with a coach is really helpful to create something that is appropriate for what your goals are, that you feel confident that's going to help you get there, but that uplifts you in the day to day as well. Right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And I know that that is what you do for your clients really in that fitness realm is being that advocate, that guide really for helping them to see their blind spots. And yeah, for, yeah because if we're in our own heads all the time, which again, as we've talked about, are filled with limiting beliefs, stories, negative self-talk, uh, we're not going to really be able to accomplish anything that is sustainable when it comes to us really focusing on ourselves because a lot of the underlying emotional reasons behind that too are we tend to be over givers. And when you're a yes. you go, you do your be, and especially if you have children, which is proper because they do require you to be self-sacrificing because they're helpless. They need you to be there for them. But when you're already that way, then you really just are super extra with it, super neglectful of yourself. And yeah. at the end of the day, you find yourself bankrupt and you just keep putting yourself last. And so you need someone who's outside of your gun, outside of your stuff to tell you, hey, yeah, I'm going to need you to go ahead and do this or yeah, this is going to work, whatever, you know, so that's what's going to be reasonable for you, you know. Um, I know for my clients, it's, you know, in the emotional realm and a lot of times they're very self-aware, right? 
they know what their issues are or they think they know what their issues are, but they can talk about it all day, right? But there's no, there's nothing. It's just like, okay, you have an awareness, but you haven't done anything about it. And it's just because they don't know how. And so that's the part that yeah. to help them to unravel is the how. How do you stop yes. the negative self-talk? How do you stop beating yourself up? How do you get to the bottom of your limiting beliefs and get rid of it so it's no longer holding you back as a block or a limit to where it is that you want to go next? How do you create that mental freeness and space to sit back and get in touch with what you really desire, what you really want, what lights you up, right? And so, yes, you do need that person outside of yourself. And I know you know, because, you know, we met in a coaching program together. So we yes. work with the, with the same coach and we understand that even if you are a coach, you still need a coach, you know, to help you oh my gosh. with whatever you're working on, especially as an entrepreneur, you know, because you're really, you can feel like you're out on an island and like you're the only one. And the same thing can be true, you know, of when someone is trying to address their fitness. They can sometimes feel like they don't have a community of support to belong to, let alone someone one-on-one -on -one to check in with them and help them, you know, to do things, um, you know, to a greater degree or a greater extent. That's right. And I mean, I think you just nailed it too. It's, it, it's, ha it's trying to figure out that balance, right? The and I, but balance can be such a cliched word. Mm -hmm. But I, I think of um, that driven professional woman who has two children and has worked all day and just wants to go out for a walk, but she feels guilty in doing that because she says, you know what? I've been working all day. I need to spend time with the kids, which is wonderful, but she also needs her self-care too. Mm -hmm. So it's giving yourself that permission. So how do I work this out? How can I do both, right? And sometimes right. we can't, it's a choice, but it really does become, it, it, we have to figure it out objectively together because it's also a benefit to your children to see you practicing self-care because yes. we see as mothers by example. Yes. And when they see that, oh my gosh, that is such a teaching moment for our children to see how important physical activity is mm -hmm. and, you know, making, taking the time to make healthy foods and, and things like that. So you're right. It, it is, it is really hard for, I think, a woman to figure out. Um, it's like needing that coach to really look outside and say, no, give yourself permission to do this because you're not only benefiting yourself, but you're benefiting all those who are in your life that care about right. you as well. And that's hard to see sometimes. <laughs> right. And I know for me, um, my husband and I last year, we worked out because um, I had my daughter 2020 and that was two months after the lockdown for the pandemic. So that was crazy. Wow. So it was a while before I started working out again. And so we started in the fall of last year, working out consistently together four days a week. Um, and then the Omicron came through, you know, even though we were vaccinated or whatever, it's still Omicron was everybody's booster shot, right? So <laughs> that got us in December and we just recently got back on track. Um, Cause you know, that takes a lot out of your body, you know, um, just being, even though it wasn't serious, like nobody was hospitalized still, you know, you just fought a virus. And so you kind of have to recover from that, but it threw me off of the routine. And so sometimes even when you get good momentum going, you can fall out of your routine. And so you need to change it. And so for example, my husband works four days a week. So I said, okay, when we put our kids to bed, I have to nurse my daughter to sleep, which means I'm pretty much falling asleep to put her to sleep. And then I go spend a little bit of time with my son before he goes to sleep. And so I've been doing a lot of laying down, you know, and so to get re-motivated to now work out at like almost eight o'clock, it's like, please. So I said, you know what, As on, I'm going to work out on your days, your work days, because he works four days a week, four tens. As soon as you come home, we're going to work out. And the kids will just be there with us in the loft and then yeah. we'll put them to bed. And so that's what I have my energy, right? It's crazy with a four-year-old and almost two-year-old, you know, right in between your legs, even though we have them, we have things for them to do, you know, they don't really care about that. They want to be involved in what you're doing. So it makes it challenging, you know, because you're going back and forth and stop, get out, whatever, but it's still getting done, right? Yeah. And so then it's at an, an hour that's early enough 
for me that I have the energy. My daughter, I think, is especially important as women when we have daughters. Because you talked about modeling self-care. Yes. Daughters to see their mothers doing something for themselves and not always looking tired or mm -hmm. grumpy or just, you know, you know, I mean, think back when we were growing up with our moms. I mean, I mean, maybe there were some, I'm not saying our mothers were not happy, but there were a lot of times where our moms were stressed. And that probably was, especially depending on how many siblings you had, may have been the predominant mood you saw her in. And so you live what you learn, you know, just not even thinking about it. And you believe this is what motherhood, womanhood looks like. You're just stressed, you overgive, you don't take any time for yourself, and you just take care of everybody else. And so I feel like my daughter seeing me work out, that's good for her to see, oh, mom's doing something for mom with dad. Now they're doing something together, you know, and we're all as a family up here doing this. And, um, and like I said, it's a sacrifice, right? Because you said this woman who's tired of the end of the day, maybe that walk, maybe she has to bring the kids. And maybe yes. she's as peaceful as she would have liked. <laughs> yeah. She kills two birds with one stone. And guess what? She's still walking. So that, you know, that, and so that's what I look at is it's like, is it the maybe magnitude of the workout I would get if I was just alone or with my husband, you know, like really pushing and not stepping over people, <laughs> little people, probably not, but I'm still doing something. I'm moving and, and, and giving myself that permission is what has made it possible. So, you know, to your point, everything you say is so true. A lot of times we can overcomplicate things and what yes. you're able to do as a coach is to really help make it simple. Absolutely. And one thing I love what you um, said earlier was about having that discussion with your spouse and working it out so that when you're doing some exercise, even if it's a quick workout, your spouse is that you've had that discussion with them. This is important to me. I need these 20 minutes to myself. Mm -hmm. Can you look after the kids? Right. And having that discussion and that clarity that, you know, I, I really need the self care. I mean, cause that's not only good for ourselves, it's good for our relationship. Right. And yep. having that under understanding um, and that discussion, I think, which is your expertise, you know, um, in relationships, but, that self-care, you know, and because sometimes it just needs to be said because our self-care is, is different than our spouse's self-care. We all yes. have different needs. And sometimes they just can't see that, you know, it just really has to say, you know, the conversation just needs to be had. Look, I need you at this time, right? I need this time. And the other thing too, that you brought up that is so true. And I see this to my clients all the time. You know, expect three out of four workouts to be crappy workouts <laughs> where you're just getting the job done. It's not, mm -hmm. it's quick. You may not have spent the time. You may have been slower. You may have been tired. But really, don't judge your workout so much because it really is about movement and consistency. Your body is benefiting from it, even though maybe you weren't as strong as you were yesterday or, mm -hmm. you know, it had to be, you had to cut it in half it still has such huge value. Um, again, it's about the consistency, not so much about the intensity. If you're right. doing something every day, some days it'll be long, some days it'll be shorter, and that's totally fine. You're, you're gonna find your body is really going to, um, you're really gonna get results. If you, if you maybe some, some days, you know, lower your expectations a little bit in that workout because life is busy, right? And then when you do that, then you can sustain it long term. Right. And then you get the results. Right. Yes. So, you know, yeah. what I was thinking when you said um, having that conversation with your spouse, it's funny because, you know, we're married women here and husbands really have uh, one large, huge motivator. <laughs> we know what they love about us. <laughs> so if I'm, if I'm, if I work out early and I'm showered early and the kids are in bed early, guess what I have time for? <laughs> that's right <laughs> so he listen he'll be more than happy to do whatever you need him to do to support your me time or work out with you or whatever if he knows he's getting rewarded <laughs> well yeah and on that point as women and then you want it too because you're feeling yes good. you're feeling good yeah you're feeling good about yourself. You're mm -hmm. feeling strong. You know, when you have those happy hormones. Yes. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they catch on to that one really quick, don't they? 
<laughs> this is mommy's time. Everybody quiet. Yes, they'll be supporting you very, very much if you tap in to that one strong motivating factor that they have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, that is so good. That is so good. <laughs> oh man. So um, any um, tips or suggestions for women who are kind of in this place of feeling like they've been trying to DIY it themselves. Um, they're not exactly sure what's involved in working with someone like you, um, what that looks like. Uh, maybe you can talk a little bit about your program and, and how you help, you know, the women that you work with. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I, I am a, a coach, so I really like to have the discussion first with women and see where, what it is that um, that they're struggling with because it's, it's different for all of us. Right. Um, again, because there's so many stressors in our life and for every woman, it's a little bit different. So I like to have that conversation first. Mm -hmm. Um, the biggest mistake I think women make is they, they try and find a program that's just inappropriate for where their body is right mm -hmm. where their hormones are maybe they have some um health issues um because you know fitness and nutrition it really does need to be individualized and the truth is usually women have the most important pieces about being healthy but there's just usually a couple of things that are keeping them stuck and so it's and again and it's just about individualizing it so i like having that conversation uh, with someone first to see where it is they're getting stuck, you know, and um, again, it's a little bit of assessment as well. Where are their hormones? You know, are they gluten intolerant? You know, are they perimenopausal? Do they have allergies? Right. All of those things. Maybe they're doing an exercise program that's inappropriate for them. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really, really important um, to look at that first. A lot of women don't realize they're eating a lot of um, inflammatory foods because there's so many um, inflammatory substances in food that we consider to be healthy so um, usually you know it's it can be a really easy fix it's just sometimes we just can't see it so I like having that conversation first um, but I follow a three-step process my program is called ultimate reset and it's 12 it's 12 weeks and it's really about taking um, nutrition and fitness and customizing it according to what your body needs, but also the goal that you want to achieve. What's your goal? Where do you want to be? And then also tailoring it to your lifestyle. Because let's face it, you know, if you're working full time and you have young kids, there's a lot of demands in your life. So your actual day to day needs to be assessed mm -hmm. so that the right program can be fit in to what your current lifestyle is. Um, and that's really important. This is why nutrition isn't one size fits all. Um, so I like to do um, a, a consultation, uh, like a discovery call first, and really give them some nuggets so that they can jumpstart just working on two or three of those issues first, and then taking it from there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I guess I'll share a little bit about what I do and how um, yes. really the two pieces go together because the emotional side of things is what feeds everything else, right? Mm -hmm. So often we try to, we think it's our determination. We think it's our stick to it but it's our emotional state that actually is dri the driving force behind everything that we do. If we don't feel like something, doing something, we're not doing it. If we don't like something, we're not going to do it long term. If we feel uncomfortable, whatever. Our feelings, our negative feelings will impact what we do. And so um, I have a year-long mastermind. It's called The Prosperous Wife. And in there, we work. I work with um, powerful, driven women coaches and business owners, you know, entrepreneurial women who have a generally healthy relationship with their husband. Um, but, you know, would love to see that relationship go from good to great. And really, by focusing on themselves, understanding that it's who they're being and who they are, how they're showing up, that is having an impact on that relationship and wanting to really make that shift there. Because 
we are the only ones we can control. And so if we focus yes. on ourselves and we do that work to really clear up our minds mentally of all that gunk of the limiting beliefs that we still have lingering about womanhood, about men, about relationships. Because I, I have clients, they're married and those lingering beliefs, limiting beliefs they have about like men being liars or not being around, you know, that were validated by their previous toxic relationships, even though they're married to a good man, the belief hasn't gone away. And so they find themselves feeling this sense of anxiety or discomfort in their relationship. And it's because the beliefs and the reality are not jiving. And so their mind is trying to make sense of what doesn't, it's like, no, this can't be true. You know, and so then they begin to create problems where they don't exist or they're looking for hypothetical problems, you know, and things like that. So in this year log mastermind, we address all of that emotional stuff that's kind of interfering with you being able to show up as the best version of yourself in your marriage and by extension your business because who you are who you're being affects everything in your life you know and as you know as coaches we in our marketing and our messaging we speak to one thing right but we know that when a person begins to unravel the ball of yarn that is their um childhood trauma limiting beliefs it changes who they are and it has a positive at uh, impact on every aspect of their life so um so that's what i do and we spent a year together because what i have found coaching over time um uh that i've been doing this is the more time the better <laughs> you know there was one time i had a three-month program and then it was six months which i still do six months one-on-one -on -one, but my year-long mastermind is limited to just five women as well because i'm sure wow. you know that having those smaller containers you know are really good too because then people are able to get that individualized support but also the synergy and the energy of being with a group so so that's what i do and so if any of you are watching and you are looking for someone to support you um, on your fitness journey especially if you're over 50 especially if you don't know where you are hormonally especially if you feel like i'm over 50 so i just have to have a gut that hangs out over my pants mm -hmm. <laughs> Teresa's whole thing is um, having a flat belly that you can butt up, button up your skinny jeans <laughs> at over 50, you know, and oh, a tucked in shirt. That's what you say. You can tuck your shirt in. Tell you that's right. Well, that's all yes. about tucking the shirt in. If you want to be able to tuck your shirt in and strut your stuff, she's the one to call because, you know, a lot of times, unfortunately, in that age bracket, some can feel like they've just given up or have to accept certain things about their body and really what you're saying is no that's true you know that's yeah not true it's just a choice and it's a, a matter of doing something different and it doesn't have to be hard so definitely yeah. reach out to Teresa if that if that's something that you're looking for and anything that you want to say before we um wrap this up well I just want to um say I love what you do and I love how you offer a year long mastermind I think that's so important because I see so many women that have limiting beliefs but don't realize that they have limiting beliefs because they've been living with them so long and so that is a piece i could see that really takes time to unravel it's not something but what a life-changing um moment you can have when you finally work through so the fact that you offer a year-long program for that i think is just going to be so life-changing for so many women because again those limiting beliefs become a part of who you mm -hmm. are yeah and it must be you know it's such a process to work through that and really how can we get ahead if we actually don't believe how can we get to those goals i mean that's that's everything <laughs> yes that's if you everything. don't believe it's possible for you on the and see on the conscious level you go oh yeah I want to look good and yeah I'm gonna lose weight and yeah I'm gonna do all these things and then underneath it your program like, uh -uh. you no we don't we 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 can't do that you know um whatever the case is well, you're not good enough you're not worthy whatever those beliefs are that you're not aware of and you're like why do I keep starting and stopping why do I keep sabotaging myself that's why because you don't know it's like a computer it's never gonna do anything more than what it's programmed to do. And That's our, brains, right. our minds are exactly the same. We're never going to do anything beyond the limits that we didn't have anything to do with, right? It's our parents' messaging, the things that they told us, the conditioning we received, and then the confirmation we had throughout our lives because our minds want to prove us right. 
So they seek situations that prove, oh, I'm not worthy. So no wonder I ended up with this guy that's terrible. You know, that makes me feel like I'm not worthy of love or that I have to chase or who's emotionally unavailable, right? So yes. that's what happens is we become like, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy, basically. And so, yes, we're not aware of it. But when we look at the results of our life, what our choices, that tells us everything we need to know. So we can feel like we want something. We can feel like something would be a great idea. But what is our life really telling us mm -hmm. about what we really to believe to be true for ourselves? That Look at your life. Look at your results. That'll tell you what you really believe about what you truly are allowed to have, about what you deserve, et cetera. And I'm not saying like if someone's in a decent relationship, they feel they deserve that. None of that. What I'm saying is that there are certain things about that person that on a subconscious level you find uh, that you're drawn to or attracted to or find familiar because of your own past pain or trauma that you experienced that you are just reliving essentially over and over. And so you have to change that. Yes so that you can attract something different or be okay in a healthy relationship because maybe you are with someone that's different and, and go from there. And the same thing with food, same thing with working out, changing your relationship with these, with your goals, with consistency, all those things are related to what is it that you believe mm -hmm. to be possible and true for you. And that's all in, <laughs> in there and has to be changed. So. Well, this is a wonderful conversation. Yes. Risa, thank you so much for hopping on this live with me. Um, we're going to go ahead and say um, adios to everybody yes. who watched this live. Yes. And, and was, if you're watching the replay, just... please follow Teresa at Flow Fit Coaching. Um, and I'm at Coach Shamila LV. And I'll let you just say a few words before I, um, well, I guess before I exit out of the live. <laughs> well, all, all I can say is I can think of so many women that, um, whose lives you can change with what you what you have said and what you do and Thank uh, you. Uh, absolutely it's just so important it's so important so thank you for for sharing that with me absolutely and with everyone else yes and, and thank you for being great. here oh give your website because i also am going to post this probably on facebook and youtube and someone might not be on instagram so where can they find you as well oh yeah absolutely it's flowfitcoaching.com all right. Well, thank you so right. much, Teresa. We will have to do this again. Oh, thank you guys thank for you, watching. Thank you, my friend. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.